God. Good to see everybody. Good to see everybody on this beautiful Monday. A new week. A new week and always a chance to get it right. <laughs> Another week to get it right. Amen. Forget about last week. Forget about last week. It's a new day. A new week. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's a new day. And now let's keep rewriting the new day. Forget about the old day. Yes, it happened. Yesterday did happen. But now guess what? You're still here. You're still here. Old things have passed away. And you're still here. Amen. Today we have a very good topic. A very serious topic. Amen. Now, the whole... I didn't have room for the entire title. But the entire title is actually Poetic Lessons. And the entire title is... PTSD, dealing with PTSD through the Word of God. The whole title, after Poetic Lessons, is dealing with PTSD through the Word of God. Now, I, I touched on P PTSD uh, uh, several months ago, but I uh, the, the Holy Spirit convicted me last night. He says, well, you need to, you need to share your testimony about PTSD. Because I've been walking in victory over PTSD since the bad accident I had in 2014. PTSD, to let you guys understand why I praise so much, is because praise is what has kept the PTSD under control. You got to understand that PTSD is depression on steroids. Let me say it again. PTSD is depression on steroids you can you can consider ptsd supernatural depression stands for post-traumatic stress disorder now the holy spirit gave me a a healing acronym i'll share in a minute now look let's break it down first first of all let's break it down to understand that some people think ptsd is something beyond reach something beyond healing Anything we feel in the flesh is not beyond God. Let's say it again. Nothing that attacks your flesh is beyond God's power. First of all, we got to understand that. So for our text today, our text today, when you deal with PTSD, depression, worry, guilt, negativity, they all fall in the same family. PTSD, PTSD is really out of control because it can happen not just in war. Some people think PTSD is only in battle. It's not in battle. If you have a major change in your life, you have a major trauma, something happened to you suddenly and changes your life, whether it can be death in the family, a death of a loved one, trauma in war, change of lifestyle caused by a trauma. See, traumatic is the key. Traumatic, something. Now, we always talk about Peace, joy, faith, and hope. Traumatic means something stole all four at the same time. Something stole your peace, your joy, your faith, and your hope all at the same time. That's what made the depression supernatural. Depression. We get depressed. If you lose one of them, you get depressed. If you lose one. But if you lose all four, your peace, your joy, your faith, and your hope all at the same time, it feels like your world just caved in on you. And so I want to share a little bit of my testimony to let you understand what how I dealt with it. And for those of you who've been dealing with it, for those of you who are dealing with it, you, first of all, you got to recognize it. When I had the bad fall in 2014, when I was in a restaurant, and they mopped the floor with grease. I had no idea the floor had grease on it. I, I went to get my food. The floor had grease on it. Both feet went up. I landed on my back and knocked out five discs in my back. Now, now I, I, first of all, I laid on the floor saying, now, I hope my back isn't broken because at the time I weighed 290. And if you land on your back with no broken, no way to break the fall, I laid on the floor and I said, now, my feet can move. My arms can move and my neck can move. Okay, I'm not paralyzed, praise God. I'm not paralyzed. So then 
I said, actually, I feel pretty good. But then I remembered, I remembered a, a, a friend of mine told me, whenever you have a back injury, your, your spine is in shock. And it takes about two weeks before you feel the pain. So even though I didn't feel pain the day of the fall, the Holy Spirit reminded me of that statement. So I told the person, uh, the manager, uh, let me have a let me have an accident report. I need to fill out an accident report. So I filled out the accident report. What I didn't know, what I didn't know was when they went to make a copy of the accident report, they added wet floor signs were present. There were no wet floor signs present. They when they went to make a copy of the accident report, they wrote on the report that signs were posted. There were no signs posted. Now remember that later. Now, now, the the that the, 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 the pay attention to this. I won the settlement, but because they lied on the report and said signs were posted, I didn't catch it. I I trusted that they were making a copy and giving me the copy I signed. They didn't. They went to make a copy, added that phrase, that one phrase decreased the amount of settlement I got because I missed it. Now, I'm saying this because two weeks later, my back started getting in pain. I started bending over more, bending over more. I couldn't stand straight for like two years. Now, I go to the doctor. I tell the doctor, I doctor, I doctor as well, how, how long, uh, doctor, how long is this gonna, how, how long will it take me to heal? How long does this process take to heal? The doctor says to me, well, you know, I really get used to a new lifestyle. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute, get used to, are you telling me there's no healing? See, we gotta be careful. Some doctors don't even try to give you hope. I asked the doctor, how long will this take to heal? She tells me, well, I get used, I get ready for a new lifestyle, meaning there is no healing. I, I, re I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I rebuke that statement. I almost said it to her, I almost said it to her face. I rebuke you right now in Jesus' name. Tell me I get ready for a new lifestyle of never being healed because my God is a healer. I'm sorry. So now, see, we, we have to understand that we follow and believe in the great physician. God is in charge of everything. So even though I couldn't move the way I could move, my life has suddenly changed. Now, some of you have shared with me how your life has changed in different ways like this. Now, what PTSD does the devil uses PTSD to make you feel defeated, to make you feel there is no hope. Remember I told you last week, the devil hits you when you're down. The devil tries to steal, kill, destroy all hope, all prayer, all faith. He's trying to tell you, you just had this trauma happen to you. It could be physical, emotional, whatever it is that happened to you that changed your life suddenly and stole your hope your fear, your, your, your faith, your hope, your joy, everything lost. Now, immediately, I started feeling pain about two weeks later. And the pain got so bad that one by one, all the jobs I had were physical. I was a teacher, a personal trainer, and security guard. All three jobs had to quit because the pain got so bad in my back, I couldn't do anything physical. Now, obviously, the first thing you start fearing is what's going on. What do I do? Now, post-traumatic stress. Now, what's happening? When you start seeing, you start, I mean, John, when you feel defeated, here comes fear. What am I going to do? My, I, I, I'm giving up job after job. I can't do this anymore. I can't do that anymore. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What's happening? Fear is coming in. Post-traumatic stress. The trauma happens. The trauma changes your life. Then the devil hits you. Stress comes in because the devil rides the spirit of fear. The devil comes to life and tells you what you can't do anymore. Look at you. It's your fault. The devil kept telling me, it's your fault. You missed the, you missed the report. You missed the fact that they lied. And it's your fault. It's your fault because you, you could have got more money in the settlement, but you didn't because it's your fault. That brought depression on. See, let me tell you, if, it, if this happened in 2014, the back injury led to a knee replacement because I couldn't stand straight. Now I'm going somewhere. I'm, I'm building the I'm building the, 
I'm building the case for you, for you to understand how to deal with PTSD. For those of you who have gone through something, if you notice, once you go through one thing, it seems like everything is going wrong. It seems like everything's going wrong. When you have one trauma hit you, it seems like the world is caving in. I couldn't stand straight. I had to give up all my, my physical jobs. Then I had knee surgery because the right knee started hurting so bad because I couldn't stand straight. It caused a, night, a right knee replacement. They wanted, to, they wanted to operate on both knees. I refused. So now, now I'm dealing with the knee replacement and I'm dealing with knee replacement and depression. I can't do things anymore like I used to. So now after recovery from the right knee replacement, I try to do just everything, everyday things. I pick up some laundry and the laundry felt like a hundred pounds. Now, this is where PTSD hits you. The way it hits you, you might just start crying for no reason. You, you suddenly realize that your body can not, is suddenly is not reacting. Your body is having trouble coping with what the what the trauma was. The trauma devastated you so much that you have you have trouble coping with the the, the, the struggle. That's that's the, the stress disorder. The traumatic event caused stress, and the whole battle is the disorder. Post traumatic stress disorder. That's what it stands for. So now you're going through all this stuff in your mind because the devil is attacking your mind as you physically, as you physically feel all this turmoil, the devil's telling you, you'll never get better. You'll never heal. Why'd you take your life? Why'd you get, why'd you get mad and hurt somebody else? See, the devil comes in and takes your mind and tries to take your mind to another place, a place of negativity, a place of darkness to make sure you don't heal. That's what we got to learn as Christians. We must learn to rebuke everything the devil puts in your mind. Rebuke every negative thought. Rebuke anti-faith thoughts. Rebuke negativity of every kind. Because the devil will hit you with it whenever he can. To keep you down. To bring you down. To make you feel hopeless. And so, now, now I praise God for Jonah. Because one of the main things they tell you. You got it when you're going through PTSD. You got to have someone to support you, a, a, a group or a loved one. John was my angel the entire time, cause when I felt like I was just hopeless, it felt like I had no. You know, like the devil was just tell me you'll never get better, you'll never be able to exercise again, you never this, you never that. I had to rebuke him every day. Now before Golden Nuggets, I was doing weekly praise and worship at a mission. But the mission became so painful because I had to stand for an hour and a half praising worship like we do, praising worship, praising worship, and then a sermon. Now, the pain by 2016 had gotten so bad that after the sermon, I could barely walk after, after the service. I could barely get to the car because my back was hurting so bad. And John was there every step of the way because I was just breaking into tears because I couldn't move the way I used to move. I was an athlete all my life since since high school. I've been an athlete, working out six days a week. All of a sudden, my life had changed. My lifestyle changed. The pain was consistent, and see, and this was the blessings of Golden Nuggets. The pain had gotten so bad in 2016 that I, all of a sudden I prayed, God, God, I'm having trouble, Lord. Give me strength. The pain is unbearable, Lord. The pain is unbearable. I'm trying to. I'm trying to pray the word, Lord. I'm trying to spread the word, but the pain, Lord, I need help with the pain. All of a sudden, the mission suddenly said, well, we, we want to tell you what to preach. I know you got a message, but we want to tell you what to preach. I said, wait a minute. What do you mean you want to tell me what to preach? The, the Holy Spirit tells me what to preach. But all of a sudden, right after I prayed, Lord, I need strength for the pain, the mission said, we'll give you what to pray we'll give you what to preach and the holy spirit says time to leave time to leave so right at the end of january 2017 i said lord uh that season's over lord uh what's next lord what's next so what does he do what does he do he gives me a mystery where i'm sitting down in the car the whole time you see what god did i prayed lord for deliverance from the pain, even though I'm still in pain, waist down, 
waist down, I'm still in pain. But what he gave me, he gave me the answer to keep on preaching and praising in a ministry where I'm sitting down and not dealing the pain. So when, when I'm, praising, I'm praising with you guys, I don't feel the pain because I'm sitting down. The pain happens when I stand up and try to walk. And I'm, I'm, st I'm still in therapy. Now, now I'm, I, I gave you that whole background. I gave you that background because one of the poems that the Lord gave me, one of the poems the Lord gave me is pain, <clears throat> pain can't steal my joy. Uh, one of the poems is pain can't steal my joy. See, we got to remember when your body is under attack, when your body is under attack, your spirit is untouched. Woo! When your body is under attack, your spirit is untouched. So when you praise God, you praise Him as if you're healthy. Your body can be wrecked in pain. Your body can be wrecked in pain. But if you're praising God, there's not a touch. He can't touch your spirit because you're on fire with the Lord. And you're praising God every day. He can't touch it. The, the, the devil, pain, can't steal my joy because the devil can't touch the spirit. He hits us. He hits your body. Wrecked with pain. You get all this pain. And, and he tries to steal your joy by making you feel so much pain that you won't pray. That you won't praise. He's trying to steal your praise by increasing the pain in your body. But we know we've learned to what? We've learned to what? Praise God anyhow. I don't care how I feel. I'm praising God anyhow. And that's why, that's why he gave me the cardio praise. Now we're doing cardio praise. Not only I didn't get sad, I got mad. I, oh, oh, devil. Oh, devil. You trying to you try to hit my spirit. Well, guess what? I'm gonna praise harder. Now I'm gonna do cardio praise. That's what cardio praise came out. The cardio praise came out to slap the devil who's trying to make the pain so bad that he'll steal my praise. But in, instead, I increase the praise by cardio praise. Praise like praise like you're going crazy. Just praise God like you. Praise God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Praise God like it's your last breath. Praise God anyhow. Through the pain. Through the struggle. Through the storm. So that's that's when God gave me golden nuggets in 2017. He answered two prayers. The first answer to the prayer was, let me let you let you let me praise you in a environment where there's no pain. Now notice, notice. Even though I'm still dealing with the pain, he changed the location from standing up to I never would have thought I would have had a ministry in the car. I, it never crossed my mind to have a ministry in the car. But God answered the prayer, Lord, I want to praise you still, but my back, my back is hurting so bad, Lord. I, I just can't praise. He changed the environment. He, end, he ended the season at the mission and then started Golden Nuggets. That, and you guys know how I started. I was just loving sunrises. I had no idea it was going to turn into a ministry. I was just loving the Lord, doing the pain. I would get in the car. I had to move the car. I fell in love with sunrises. And God says, turn on the, turn on the, turn on the, the, the video and just record how good God is to you as you watch the sunrise. And as I, I watched the sunrise, I thought about how good God is. Even though I'm in pain, how good God is. And I recorded that for 30 days. By the end of 30 days, I had a following. I had no idea it was going to turn into a ministry. But God knew it. Because all God needs is a willing heart. All he needs is a willing heart to get you, to take you where he needs to take you. PTSD makes you think there is no hope. PTSD makes you think there's no way God can use you. The goal of the devil through PTSD is to make you feel like giving up on life itself. He's coming to steal, kill, destroy, and he uses PTSD to try to take you out. But when you understand to praise God anyhow, to praise God anyhow, like the word says, I have learned in whatever state to be content. I have learned in whatever state to be content. Praise God anyhow, through the storm, 
through the darkness, through the pain. Now, now, if, before I share the poem with you, before I share the poem, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gave me a new acronym. Now, PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Now, what the Holy Spirit gave me, listen, write this down. PTSD from the Holy Spirit. The P stands for praise. The T stands for talking to the Lord daily. S, seeking his face daily. D, to destroy everything the devil's trying to do to bring you down. Look at that. The Holy Spirit gave me a positive acronym for PTSD. P, for praise. T, talk to the Lord every day. S, seek his face and his presence every day. D, destroy what the devil's trying to do to bring you down. Now, if you look at that acronym, that's telling you how to deal with PTSD. The first thing you have to regain is your peace. When you understand what PTSD is, you understand that we've talked about it through all the lessons in, in, in Golden Nuggets. We've talked about how to deal with peace. We talked about how to deal with fear and stress to keep your mind stayed on him for perfect peace. The reason you need someone to help you, the reason you need someone to help support you is because when you're under attack and those of you who are going through depression, goes going through PTSD, those of you going through pain, you understand what I'm saying. You need someone, at least one person, to be in your corner to help you pray through it to cry with you, to pray over you, to pray with you. You need a support system to help you make it through it. You can't do this alone. You cannot survive alone. I don't know what, if I didn't have, if Jonah was not there, I have no idea what would happen. Jonah, so, Jonah single-handedly was my, seriously, my help me. She helped me make it through that storm. Because the devil, and then, 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 Dealing with all that, dealing with all of that, my mother passed. See, the devil tried to get me, the, the devil tried to take me down. After dealing with all that physical stress, my mother passed. Now, is that, see, the devil tries to take you out. The devil tries his best to take you out. But you got to understand. When we say, when we say, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world, you understand, we're under attack. We are under attack. We are under attack. When you understand we're under attack, you understand the importance of the word. You got to keep the word in your mouth. You got to praise every day. Fellowship or not, praise every day. What did, what did I just say? P, praise every day. T, talk to the Lord every day. S, seek his presence every day. D, destroy what the devil's trying to do. The devil's trying to kill, steal, and destroy everything in your life. And if you don't stay connected, if you don't stay connected, he will bring you down. Some of you may be going through depression and not understanding you're going through PTSD. I had no idea... <clears throat> My misunderstanding was that PTSD was only for war. That's actually called, it's actually called, it's actually called war PTSD, meaning you went to war and got the PTSD, all the trauma of battle, being in a war. That's actually called war PTSD. I didn't understand the depression. If depression comes from a sudden loss, a family member loss, an accident, rape, violence, something that changes your life overnight, something changes your life like that, and it suddenly steals your joy, peace, faith, hope, all at the same time. That's traumatic. You lost everything, your joy, your peace, your faith, and hope was snatched away in one second. And the stress comes in. The traumatic stress follows that. But you don't understand it can happen with any event, not just war. And the purpose of this lesson, 
my my event was a fall my event was a fall some of you like uh, have 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 lost a loved one have lost a child or have lost a sudden suddenly a suddenly happened in your life that was traumatic and and you had trouble dealing with it when you're trying to deal with the loss or the change that's where PTSD comes in the traumatic stress comes in after the event and if you don't have the word in your life if you don't have God in your life you got to have God in your life to be able to make it through it because when the word says be still and know that I am God our text be still and know that I am God you got to understand that God can make you help you make it through it when you know that you know God is with you you have something to hold on to you may you may feel like you're sinking in the ocean right now but when you when you hold on to God's unchanging hand when you hold on to God's unchanging hand he keeps you from sinking he keeps you amen Lord he keeps you sinking. amen Jonna the fall caused a snowball effect of losses and sudden life changes and, and, and see I'm still dealing with it yes I'm still dealing with it but guess what because I'm doing what the Holy Spirit says by praising more instead of getting more depressed increase your praise let me say that again instead of giving in to depression increase your praise that's when you slap the devil that's when you slap the devil by praising more instead of getting more depressed praise more praise God anyhow it doesn't matter if you feel like you may not feel like praising praise God anyhow I don't feel like praising today praise God anyhow praise God anyhow because as soon as you praise depression got to go praise and depression cannot exist at the same time let me say it again praise and depression cannot exist at the same time either you praise or you're depressed you either praise or depressed they don't work together they do not they do not and cannot exist together what are you doing are you are you giving in this depression or you give the praise is what you look at the most helps you make it through the storm amen now let me share the, let me share the poem pain pain can't steal my joy the devil's getting desperate and trying everything our love for the Lord drives him insane so he's trying a different attack by attacking through physical pain when your bodies are racked with pain well, excuse me when our bodies are attacked with pain is unreal shooting through our body and more a pain that makes you want to give up if it will close the painful door a pain that makes you want to give in if you close the painful door the pain in our joints our muscles that ache through infirmities of every kind the pain that throbs each and every day I seek relief of any kind but in the midst of all the excruciating pain I still know God is here in tears I cry out and call his name to keep the pain from turning to fear oh Lord I scream in agony sometimes please take this cup from me give me strength to still stand tall cause you know where you're taking me you taught me there's blessings in infirmity but I continue to give you praise even when the pain pulls me to the ground I'll praise you to the end of my days for no matter how much pain I feel Lord I never take my eyes off you for in the long run it's what the devil really wants cause there's nothing he can make me do I trust you Lord wholeheartedly it's not determined by how I feel even though I can't understand the pain is your will 
that I'll be, if it's your will, I will be healed. Pain can steal your joy. See, even in the pain, we must know that God is still with you. You are not alone when you're going through pain, emotional pain or physical pain. God is still with you in the midst of the pain. And the devil, the devil wants you to think. He wants you to think you by yourself. Because he wants you to make you feel God has left you. Family's left you. He's trying to make you feel alone. But Jesus said, I will never leave you. I'll be with you even to the end of the age. So it doesn't matter how much pain you feel physically or emotionally. You are never alone because God is right there with you. To give you the strength, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's right there to give you the strength you need to make it through the storm, to make it through the struggle, to make it through the pain physically or emotionally. Because he can't touch his spirit. As long as you're praising God, the devil cannot touch your spirit. That's why he's hitting you. That's why he hits you so hard physically. Because he knows a praising person, he can't touch it. Can't touch it. Because when, you, when you're praising, God is right there. And that's when he flees. Draw near to God. And God draws near to you. As Philippians 4, I mean, I mean James, uh, James 4, James 4, 8. Draw near to God and God draws near to you. So when you, no matter what the pain is that you're going through, just call his name. Jesus, I need you, Jesus. We sing it every day. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. That might be all you can say. You might be in so much pain, all you can say is, I need you, Jesus. Bam, you're in his presence. Call him. Jeremiah 33, 3, call me. Call me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, which you don't know. But it starts with what? It starts with what? Call me. When you're in pain, call him. Don't sit there and wallow in pain. Call him. Jesus, I need you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Whatever it is, call him. When you're going through something, call his name. Just by calling his name, you feel the peace come in to help you make it through it. Even if you're crying in pain, he's still there. Because it says in, in Psalm 147, he heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted. But you got to call him, Lord, I need the strength, Lord. Lord, give me strength, Lord. Help me, st help me stay strong, Lord, to make it through this season of pain. Help me, Lord. Give me strength to make it through, Lord. Give me strength. Pray for it. I tell you all the time, when you're going through something, when you're going through something and you feel like you're losing it, when you feel like you're losing it, call him. Pray for it, Lord. I need the strength, Lord. I need the focus, Lord. I, I need to help me keep my mind still on you, Lord. Help me stop listening to the voices of failure. Help me stop listening to, to the, the devil's lies. Help me stop listening to negativity because I'm under attack, Lord. I need you, Jesus, and I need you all day long. Your reaction, your reaction to stress and anxiety and pain must be to call him because he's right there. He's right there with you. Second poem. Second poem. Depression, you got to go. Second poem. Depression, you got to go. Now, the, the first poem, the first poem was written as my knees got worse and the pain in my knees was incredible. Now, Golden Nuggets had already started. Golden Nuggets had already started 2017. My surgery was 2018. From 2017 to 2018, the pain, the pain in my right knee got so bad, it felt like it felt like every time I took a step, a lightning bolt was going up my leg. So when I fished Golden Nuggets to get to the house, it felt like a lightning bolt was going up my leg with every step. 
So that's why I wrote, pain can't steal my joy. Cause devil was trying to make me not even not even go to the car to do golden nuggets. But then, but then after surgery, I did golden nuggets at home. In your face, devil. Yes, after surgery, the devil thought he had me. Good. He can't get in the car. Guess what? I started doing golden nuggets in the house. In your face, devil. Now, during all of this. I'm, try, I'm trying to tie this big picture together for you. So if you're dealing with something, I'm giving you all these examples in my life. So when you're dealing with it in your life, you can relate to different parts of my testimony. This testimony started in 2014 to now. So I'm still dealing with the pain waist down, but I'm still praising God more and more. I'm still exercising regardless. I'm praising God anyhow. Because even though I still feel the pain waist down, I'm praising like crazy, waist up. <laughs> one person, one friend of mine, I said this for, one friend of mine saw me praising God on Worship Wednesday, and the praise was so heavy, they thought I had, I had already received my complete healing. And man, I never see you dance like that. I wasn't dancing. I was sitting in the car. But the praise, the praise was so infectious. The person said, man, I'm so glad you're healed. Now, that was a, that was a validation. Because every time I pray, because every time we do Worship Wednesday, I am picturing standing up praising. Yes, I'm sitting in the car right now praising God. But I used to teach gospel aerobics. And gospel aerobics, I used praise music during my exercise class. I taught gospel aerobics for 20 years. And the praise part of class was shouting and dancing. That was my aerobics class, praising God and giving a shout at the same time. So now, so so every time I'm praising in the car, worship Wednesday, a crazy praise Friday, in my mind, I see me in the future, and I look much better than I look right now. So every time I praise God on worship Wednesday, I see myself in the future standing up praising God. Because you got you to gotta see it. You got to see it to believe it. The devil tries to keep you from seeing it. Because if the devil can keep you from seeing it, where you're trying to go. You got to see yourself healed. See yourself prosperous. See a, see a breakthrough. Don't see where you are now. We know where we are now. See yourself where you're going. See yourself delivered. See yourself breakthrough. See yourself provision. See yourself not, no longer in struggle. See yourself victorious. See it. Every day you wake up. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for my victory. And you see it. You still you still praying for it right now but you see it you see the victory because you see it i see you in the future and you look much better than you look right now but you got to believe it when you see it you got to believe it don't just see it and don't believe it no no i'm not hoping to pray in i'm not hoping to pray in i see me in the future and i look much better than i look right now i'm praising god anyhow because i look much better than i look right now see it and believe it when you pray, Mark 11, 24, Mark 11, 24, when you pray, believe you have received it. You can't believe it if you don't see it. Believe you have received it and you shall have it. If you can't see it, you can't believe it. You got to see it. Take the time every day to see it. See a victory. See your prayer answered. See whatever you're praying for. See the answer already done. Because in the spirit, it is done. It is finished in the spirit. But your faith is what brings it into now. In the spirit, it's already done. And if you lose faith, it won't manifest. If you lose faith, it won't manifest in the flesh. Because it's already done, waiting to come down and manifest in your flesh. But if you lose faith and you start doubting, you disconnect from the seeing it and you can't see it manifest because your doubt is blocking your blessing. Your doubt is blocking your blessing. If you stop praying, you stop having faith. You got to keep seeing it every day. Keep seeing it and thanking him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my healing. I'm still working on it. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Because you thank him. It's already done. When you pray, believe you have received it by thanking him every day. Whatever you pray for, whatever you pray for, the way you see it is when you thank him every day. 
that means you believe you received it. When you thank the Lord in advance, thank you, Lord, for my healing. Wake up in the morning. Thank you for provision. Thank you for my breakthrough. You're thanking him because you see it already done. The reason you say, thank you, Jesus, for my healing. Thank you, Jesus, for provision. Thank you for breakthrough. Because you see the breakthrough. You got to see the breakthrough in order to believe the breakthrough. And that means then you can believe you have it. That's how you believe you have it. Because you see it. That's the importance of seeing it. Amen. Point number two, depression, you got to go. Depression, you got to go. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to steal all my joy and get the credit and get the credit back to you. Well, I got some news to tell you. I got some news to share with you. No matter how bad I feel, you'll never take my joy of the Lord. Cause let me tell you right now, that's for real. Feeling oh so down, I'm losing all my hope. But I know that it's really all a lie. You even try to take away my reason to stay alive. My love for him is a real reason why. Sometimes I wake feeling oh so weak. Don't even know how I can make it through the day. Struggling to hold on body racked with pain I call Jesus Lord please show me the way every time I call the name above all names I know Jesus is by my side I've I've come to learn depression is a lie so devil has no place to hide hiding in the darkness I feel my mind I feel my mind slip away from God and the power I have within. I now truly know how Christ, he cares for me, and depression will never taunt me again. So what I have to do is give him all the praise. No matter how I feel, praise saves the day. It always brings to mind the peace I'm trying to find is through Jesus Christ, who is the only way depression you got to go now these poems I, I i'll have the link to these poems under the videos for you to read on your own time but sometimes you have to speak to it if you're depressed speak to depression depression in jesus name i cast you out right now if you're going through depression depression talk to it depression in the name of jesus i rebuke you right now I rebuke you. I rebuke this attack. I bind you and I cast you out of my mind, out of my thoughts, my house, my family, my kids, my marriage, back to the pit of hell from which you all came. In Jesus' name, talk to it. Use your authority. When you capture every thought, 2 Corinthians 10 5, 2 Corinthians 10 5, capture every thought. When you capture every thought, you will use your authority. Luke 10 19. So write down Luke 10, 19 and 2 Corinthians 10, 5. So in order to capture every thought in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, you got to use your authority to rebuke that thought, rebuke negativity, rebuke fear, rebuke worry, stress, anxiety, the infirmity attacking you. Use your authority. Use your authority. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Rebuke it. Bind it. And cast it out. Whatever it is, if it's trying to bring you down, if it's trying to bring you down, rebuke it, bind it, cast it out, and then what? Meditate on these things in Philippians 4, 8. Meditate on these things of God. Meditate on God's joy, his peace, his love, his healing. Meditate on the things of God and meditate, like it says in Philippians 4, 8. If it's praiseworthy, meditate on these things, not on your troubles, not on worries, not on infirmity, meditate on things of God. Because once you rebuke it, meditate on the victory. Once you rebuke whatever is attacking you, meditate and praise God for victory. That was a victory. You didn't give in to you didn't give in to depression. You rebuked it. That's a victory. Praise God. Praise God after every victory. 
praise God after every victory. The devil tried to bring you down. You rebuked him. Praise God. The devil tried to take you out. You rebuked him. Praise God. Those in victories recognize every victory because it lets you know God is still with you. It reminds you the power in the name of Jesus, the power in the blood of Jesus. That's why we use the authority every day whenever we need it. And the last poem, <clears throat> the last poem was written right after surgery in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, get, get hot here, get warm. California, California start getting warm early now. The, the third poem, sitting here, sitting here in this hospital bed. Poem number three, sitting here in this hospital bed. Now, after everything I've shared with you, all the trauma, all the depression, all the fear, now the surgery's happened, and now the pain's back, because I just had surgery, now the pain is back even, even more so, because surgery, that pain is real. Once the drugs wear off, <laughs> once the drugs of surgery wear off, you understand what real pain is after surgery. I said, oh my gosh. I thought I thought I thought it wasn't so bad. I got through my knee surgery. I said that ain't so bad. That ain't so bad. Hey, the, the doctor said that's because you're still on drugs. <laughs> day three, day three, the drugs wore off. Oh my goodness! Oh, help me, somebody! Thank you, Jesus! All of a sudden, when the when the surgery drugs wore off, I understood what real pain is, and it was nowhere near the pain I felt before. So I was getting prepared for new pain. <laughs> Woo! I said, oh, that's real pain. <laughs> I thought I was in pain before. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a pain I couldn't even picture. I couldn't even visualize this pain. And the therapy was even more painful. They grabbed my knee and pulled my knee back for therapy. I said, you better, you go get knocked out. You, you touch my knee again. I told the doctor, you touch my knee like that again. I, don't forgive me if I knock you out. <laughs> My knee is already hurting. You gonna take my foot and pull my knee back to my butt, and I'm in pain already. And that was therapy. I said, "Hey, I don't need to come here and make you hurt, make me hurt worse." <laughs> Woo! Help me, somebody. But, but it had to be done. They they have to right after surgery. They grab your foot, your your foot, and bend your knee all the way back as close as they can to your butt to make your knee bend. Now, this is like a, a week after surgery. I said, oh my gosh, nobody told me about this part. Everybody I knew, oh, a, a knee replacement, that's great, a knee replacement. Nobody told me about the therapy. The therapy was more painful than the surgery. I said, how come nobody told me this? Everybody said, oh great, great, a knee surgery. Uh, oh great, a, a knee replacement, you'll feel so good. Yeah, but. But before you feel good, you're gonna got <laughs> you gonna feel like you're going through the gates of hell in therapy. <laughs> now, 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 now they want to operate on the left knee. I've been I've been procrastinating. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm guilty. They want to operate on the left knee. I've been procrastinating. I've been using the pandemic. No, I can't do it because I, I, that's true. The pandemic is in the hospitals right now. So I procrastinated for the whole year. They weren't operate last year. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not ready for it yet. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to go through that again on the left side. So I just been kind of put it off and let the Lord tell me when. But it's going to have to happen because the left knee now is happening like the other. The left knee is pain is really bad too. But right now, I'm just trying to let you understand and that, that that when we deal with surprises now th this this poem is written right after the surgery it says sitting here in this hospital bed the title sitting here in this hospital bed as i lie here in this hospital bed much longer than i planned thoughts of panic try to rush in Oh Lord, please help me understand. 
sitting here in this hospital bed, fear attacks of every kind. But no matter how many thoughts I face, through Christ, I keep my peace of mind. Lord, I let go of every fear I have, trying to hold on. No, let me say again. Lord, I let go of every fear I have, trying to get a hold of me. Bills, debt, lack of work are all waiting outside for me. But I hold on, Lord. You are my provider for all that must come through. When there seems to be no way out, you always see me through. My total trust I put in you. You've never let me down. Even when I didn't even have a way out, you let me know that you're around. In the end, it's all another test. Oh, how God can provide. Sometimes the test is will you ask for help? Or else your downfall will be your pride. See, all these thoughts when you go through recovery in the hospital, either you look at the Lord or the devil will hit you right through the hospital bed. And those of you who've been in the hospital know what I'm talking about. The devil does not play fair. Understand, the devil does not play fair. When you're in your hospital bed, he'll hit you the hardest, trying to make you think. There's no healing to make you think the pain is worse. He'll hit you while you're down every time. You can believe that and you can expect it. So that's why we always be ready to pray. Like first, like first Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of God for you. To be, be ready to pray at the drop of a hat. Be ready to praise at the drop of a hat. Because whenever you're down, the devil will hit you when you're down. So if you're ready to react by praise, you're ready to react by prayer. You got the devil. He wants you depressed. He wants you to give up. That's what he does. Steal, kill, destroy. He's trying to take you down when you feel your lowest. But instead of giving in, instead of giving in to that, Praise God anyhow. Instead of giving in to the devil's lies and you sit there in infirmity, in, in your pain, in the hospital bed, praise God anyhow. That praise is what feeds your joy and your hope and your peace. It's a discipline. Either you give in to praise or you give in to depression. Which one do you want? Praise or depression? Praise helps you make it through it. Depression makes you give up. If you want to make it through the storm, praise God anyhow. Depression will take you down because all the fear comes with it. Depression, worry, fear, anxiety, hopelessness, death, all that's in depression. Praise, victory, joy, the, the joy of the Lord, all that is in praise. That's why we must discipline ourselves to praise God anyhow. Now, I have a, I'll have be sharing a lot of scriptures under this lesson. Because the whole purpose of this lesson is for you to understand that sometimes you, you may be going through PTSD and not even know it. And you find yourself just crying for no reason. If you find yourself feeling hopeless, you find yourself struggling to get your mind on the Lord, that's a sign of PTSD. See, you, you, when you feel like you're losing it, because the traumatic, traumatic stress disorder is you feel like you're out of control. You feel like you're losing things. You feel like overwhelm, hopelessness is all hitting you at the same time. And only by holding on to God's unchanging hand, can he pull you through that, through the storm, through the struggle, through the hopelessness. That's why we must discipline ourselves to seek his face every day, no matter how hard it seems, no matter how dark it seems, to keep your mind stayed on him 
Remember, the first thing that's stolen is your peace. And PTSD, the first thing that's stolen is your peace. So your reaction must be Isaiah 26.3. Your reaction must be Isaiah 26.3. Thou should keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Depression, perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. PTSD, perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Worry, perfect peace whose mind. It doesn't matter what the attack is. If you keep your mind stayed on the Lord, you'll have perfect peace during it. That's a discipline. We got to choose praise over depression. Praise over depression. Victory over defeat. Healing over sickness. You got to choose life. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat of his fruit. As a man thinks, so he is. What you speak and what you think is most important. As I close, Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks, so he is. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. Those two verses right there is the key to victory over PTSD through the Word of God. Even if your medication, your mindset is everything. It, even if you're on medication, some people go through medication. Even if you're on medication, your mindset helps your healing. And the doctor can take you off of it. But if your mind is out of control and you have no, no, no healing in your mind because stress is all over you, fears all over you, if your spiritual unrest is out of control, it makes the medication harder to heal. If you're on medication, see, try to avoid medication, but sometimes some people are so out of control, they need the medication to, to bring your, your, your body's chemistry back to like balance. When stress is out of control, it throws off your balance in your body. Disease turns to disease if you don't get the peace of mind dis-ease dis-ease will manifest as disease in your body if you don't capture it if you don't rebuke it the dis-ease will continue into your flesh and now you got a disease because you didn't capture it in the spirit and now your body's out of whack and your body's trying to get things together so what you think and what you speak is very important during the battle. What you think and what you speak is the key to victory over PTSD. And I, I close with a new acronym. PTSD stands for P, praise. T, talk to the Lord every day. S, seek his presence every day. D, destroy everything the devil is trying to do. To bring you down. I use that acronym now. To remind me. It's not hopeless. PTSD is not hopeless. But you need support. To help you make it through the storm. To help you stay focused. To help you stay connected to the Lord. To pray with the person. Pray over the person. When two or more are gathered in his name. When two or more are gathered in his name. He is in the midst. Prayer support is important prayer support is mandatory in order to make it through the person dealing with PTSD cannot do it alone you cannot defeat it alone once you got a prayer partner or a, a, a group praying with you that reinforces your strength and then soon you're strong enough to rebuke the devil on your own but when you're going through it at the lowest find a prayer partner or support group, people who can pray for you, they help you get your spirit right. And once your spirit is right, your mindset is right. And then you have the victory, amen? That's where the victory is. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson today, Lord, to understand how to deal 
with PTSD through the word of God, Lord. Lord, I lift up anyone and everyone who's battling with this negative disorder, Lord. The, the, the post-traumatic stress disorder, Lord. I lift up everyone right now who's dealing with PTSD, who's dealing with depression and grief and worry and all the negative attack, Lord. And Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, please touch each person right now who's struggling in that area to hold their peace, Lord. Touch them right now and let them feel your peace. Give them a supernatural strength to keep their mind stayed on you, Lord. To keep their mind focused on you, Lord. To bring them to victory over this devastating mental attack, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, for victory over for every person right now. In advance, Lord, for as each person seeks your face, Lord, they will walk in victory over this struggle in the mind, this struggle emotionally, and physically and right now Lord we thank you right now in advance for the victory for each person dealing with this situation in their life in any way for whatever reason they're going through PTSD Lord I thank you right now for touching their life right now and giving them the strength they need to be able to walk in victory right now in Jesus name we pray amen Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Before we close, as always, I always know someone's listening who doesn't understand why we praise the worship and even the sermon. So right now, as I close, before I close, I'm going into the prayer of salvation and the closing prayers. As always, please, no typing until after the closing prayers. Anything typed during the closing prayers is deleted out of respect of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening. You've been here the whole time. You heard the praise and worship. You heard the sermon. But right now, you may be going through exactly what we talked about right now. You're having trouble disconnecting right now. You're having trouble connecting because right now, your life is falling apart. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety, and maybe even PTSD is all over you right now. And you have no idea how you got on this channel. And that's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you here because he sees what you're going through right now in your life. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into a life of sin. And now your life is falling apart because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil is telling you, once you fail God, you can never go back. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and you fell back into a life of sin, there's nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life to Christ. Recommit your life. Recommit your life. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So whether you're walking in depression, overwhelm, and negativity, or you're walking as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, pray with me right now. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that's not like you in Jesus name and if you said that prayer sincerely your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit 
The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us, that teaches us, that guides us, and also convict us when we're not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you exactly what you need to, to do to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith, starve it out every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life. Which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named or unnamed, seen or unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home, out of our kids, out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell from which they all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose into the fellowship unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord, restore every area of our life, loose reconciliation, Lord, bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep your hands of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. By your stripes, we were healed. And now we know, Lord, every day, Lord, we confess it. We confess it every day. I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. I believe I receive my healing every day. Confess it. See it. Breathe it. Expect it. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose. Supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough. Supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings, Lord, let your blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship of air financial need, whatever it is. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory for Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want anything for the Lord is my shepherd. For we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed going in and blessed going out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt all of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God and nothing shall by enemies hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle they're praying for right now. And now we know, Lord, now we know every day. We take time every day to visualize it. See your miracle every day. See what you're praying for every day. See it. Believe it. And receive in your heart. And as you receive in your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you, give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch or speak to. A blessing to everyone you pray for. A blessing to everyone you pass by and bless without opening your mouth because the love and light of the Lord is all over you. 247 365 including the beer. So Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the fellowship say, Amen. Amen. Amen.